What does it take to convert a gas-powered car to all electric? Here are some frequently asked questions for our Jeep conversion project. Six months ago, we decided to convert this 99 Jeep Wrangler into all electric. And we've been documenting the entire process on several social media platforms, and we've received so many questions on YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, and other platforms that we wanted to answer a few of the questions here. <laughs> First questions are about the timeline and our personal experience to do a conversion like that. So about what percent of your conversion is done? So I would say maybe 40%. We have everything torn down. Um, we're kind of refurbishing the original chassis and the body and getting everything ready. We have a lot of concepts that we're still kind of figuring out, but we're doing a lot of work in CAD to try to make sure that everything is gonna fit. But really, there's still a lot of work ahead of time, a lot of wiring, a lot yes. of programming, so. And I think just so everybody knows, in our case, we are almost posting videos in real time. Like we do a video and a couple of days later, it's out. So what you see is really the current status. How did you learn to convert a car to electric? So I used to work on cars, so I had a Subaru, I had a couple project cars when I was a lot younger and both of us being kind of in the industry for electric vehicles uh, we've gained a little bit of experience but most of it was you know researching online talking to other people who've done it getting lots of help from companies like AEM and Cascadia Motion and the DIY electric vehicle forum but for the most part uh, we're learning as we go yes we're still learning every yep. day we everything make, is on the we fly we might make mistakes then we fix them. You know, of course, we're trying to do everything as safe as possible. That's number one. But also learn, have fun, and make something really cool. How long will it take to convert fully? So just to give you a little bit of, of, of a timeline, we started in, in December, like New Year's Eve. We really removed the engine. And since then, we're kind of working on it, mainly on the weekends and sometimes after work. But it's really a side project yep. for us. Of course, lots of research is going into this. Lots of time is going into presenting it and filming it. And we want to be done by latest next spring because we want to go to Mohawk. We want to take the electric Jeep there. Yep. And then there is an, maybe an event in September or two. So it might be making its rounds here pretty soon, but we need, of course, need to get it done. There is lots of questions about like general functions of the Jeep. Maybe lots of people are surprised that the converted Jeep will still have many of the original functions. And so let's go through this a little bit. So many people ask, will you still have four wheel drive? Uh, absolutely. So th that was one of the very first things we decided was, hey, we can't make a two-wheel drive Jeep because the Jeep community is very special, very hardcore, and we wanted to really keep as much of the Jeep functionality as possible, but of course make it electric. So this is why we're using the stock transfer case, you know, so we'll still have two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high, and then also four-wheel drive low, but this was really important for us. We want to take it off-roading. We want to go through the water. So. What you've seen so far about the batteries, of course, we've only shown you like the cells and a little bit of the, the modules that we're building. But of course, in the end, around these modules, there will be casings that will be waterproof. There will be skid plates on the bottom of the Jeep. So really, we want to take this off-roading. Yep, exactly. So, and you can see other electric vehicles out there. You can search for Rivian off-roading. There's lots of videos out there of people really going through the mud and water and, and uh, up to the wheel wells and stuff like this. So it's really, we plan on doing a lot of that kind of stuff too. Plus we want to have fun in the snow, especially here in Wisconsin. And so the Jeep will really be fun for that too. The next set of questions addresses the motor. What is the name of the motor you use? So you can see it right here. We got that from Cascadia Motion and this whole package. So the electric motor and the inverter on top is called IM225. 225 stands for 225 kilowatts. So it's a it's an all-in-one package. Uh, so it's circulating the cooling water between the electric motor and the inverter. It also has a common uh, lubrication system with the three to one gearbox. So this was a great package for us to fit inside the Jeep. They also make a, a version that doesn't have the integrated inverter on top and maybe this would have fit really nicely into the uh, transmission tunnel, but uh, we wanted this one a little bit more forward with the way that we're going to mount it with the stock transfer case. And so this was a perfect package for us. So why did we choose a single motor instead of multiple ones? Yeah, so of course I wanted to have multiple motors, one on the front, one on the back, because I think then it's even more power. But really for the simplicity of mounting everything and also for a cost perspective, 
Um, right now, the, the single motor version was uh, going to give us the performance that we wanted. I also like the opportunity to have the stock transfer case so we could even have a four-wheel drive low if we really wanted to do some fun rock crawling. There was also a question about four in wheel motors. So I don't think we've seriously looked really yeah. into this. It would be an option, but of course, kind of expensive right now. Yeah, yeah. Also, in, in, as far as I know, yeah, there's lots of prototypes or systems out there for big OEMs to get samples and use. But for two people working yeah. on a project out of their garage, uh, it would have been very <laughs> difficult for us to get four in-wheel motors. How much horsepower and torque will it make? It will put out a lot of power and a lot of torque. So it's uh, 225 kilowatts of electrical energy. Um, but a lot of that will depend on the batteries. So, you know, we're going to be able to control how much current is uh, acceptable from the batteries to try to keep them in a safe state. Um, but this, actually, this powertrain will have more horsepower and torque than the original Jeep powertrain. So it has something like 500 newton meters of torque. Uh, maybe we'll put a foot-pounds and horsepower numbers below. I didn't convert those yet. Yes. Um, but anyway, it, and especially through the three to one gear reduction, that of course will multiply times the torque. So it will really have a tremendous amount of torque. Uh, this is one of the things that we're gonna be relying on some expertise of some Jeep guys to really help us figure out, are we gonna blow up the diffs in the Jeep right away or will they last a little while? So this will be very interesting. Uh, but we kind of have the motto of, hey, let's, uh, Let's try what we can with the stock powertrain and then whatever breaks first, uh, then we upgrade it at that time. Speaking about braking, but I want to talk about a different braking, it's are you incorporating regenerative braking? <laughs> the special thing that you can do with electric vehicles is that when you decelerate in your car, the energy that you, you lose through deceleration, you can feed that back, like use your e-motor as a generator and feed it back into the battery and kind of charge up the battery again. This is what we call regenerative braking. And the AEM control system can do that. You have to add a brake sensor. So we'll have a brake pressure sensor that is then added in. And then as we you know, start to touch the brakes, it will actually use the electric motor to regenerate the energy and we will have regenerative braking. Our original Jeep was uh, a manual one and so there are some questions, could we also do that with an automatic one? If you do like what we did, which was remove the complete transmission, then yeah, it wouldn't matter if you had an automatic or a manual. One of the options and one of the reasons why we looked for a manual in the beginning is because there was a possibility of maybe mounting the motor directly to the stock transmission. And in that case, I didn't want to have to go through the automatic transmission and automatic transmission controller and maybe some of the headaches associated with that. Uh, so we had decided that, okay, if we find a Jeep, we wanted to have the option of using the manual transmission, uh, but in our case, we removed it completely. Um, so this would kind of be a suggestion for us. Very important for many of you is, can you still use your stick shift? Yeah, for sure. So there are lots of conversions where they put the electric motor on the input of the manual transmission. Then of course you can shift gears if you want to. Um, or you can just leave it in third gear. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of conversions that just then leave it in third gear. Uh, the unique thing about the electric motor is it can go forward and backwards. So actually uh, you don't even need the reverse gear, but uh, maybe you want to have fun. Maybe you want to shift gears. Um, it should be very simple to do that as well. You could do it. We don't do it that for the conversion right now. Yep. So we'll control everything with this little thing here. So this is just a eight button keypad from AEM, which talks to the uh, VCU 300 and will allow us to select park, neutral, drive, reverse, sporty mode, maybe trail mode, etc. What are you going to do for insurance on the car and what do we need to do to really drive this car on the road, right? We went to the DMV, we talked to them, they said, hey, just bring us a list of components. Um, we'll check it off, make sure it looks good, and then it gets classified here in Wisconsin as a hobby car. Uh, and then you just insure it as a hobby car. So other so other this... YouTube users like Jerry Rig Everything, he just took his title in before and after and they just made it an electric vehicle and there was no change of insurance at all. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I think it might depend on insurance company or from insurance company. Yes, it sounds to be too easy, but uh, maybe this is how it works in America. So for the European audience, it might be a little more tricky to do things like that in Europe, but in North America and in Wisconsin, it should work like this, but stay tuned. Now I have several questions about the battery. First question is, what is the voltage of the system? So we decided to go with 
400 volts. Yeah, so the nominal voltage I think will be right around 406 volts, 112 cells in series that fit well to the Cascadia motion powertrain and the onboard charger that we got from Cascadia. So that's what we decided to go with. There is lots of questions about weight in general. So what will the Jeep weigh in the end? What do the batteries weigh? I can only remember it in kilogram. It would be 250 kilogram for the batteries that we planned right now. And we sized all that. So how much capacity, how much batteries can we put into the Jeep? based on the original weight of the Jeep. So what we actually do, did is everything that we took out from the Jeep, we weighted and then we were like, okay, we have around 250, 300 kilogram for batteries. And of course you're also limited in space in a Jeep, but that turns out to be like seven modules that we want to put back in the Jeep. It would be 250 kilogram, should break even with the original uh, vehicle weight. Yeah, actually we were pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, we were kind of <laughs> trying to figure out how to get to the voltage level we wanted with the electric motor and everything like this. We were really surprised at how even the weight was. So what we took out, I mean, we were lucky that it had an inline six cylinder, uh, four liter engine in it, which was really heavy. I the think transmission it was 200 was, kilograms. Yeah, yeah, the transmission was super heavy. So, um, but by the time you really remove all of that, the exhaust, um, it was uh, a pretty neutral uh, swap for us in terms of weight. What were the original batteries you are reusing from? We got these batteries from a, a crash car that was at a scrapyard. Um, so they're LG Chem modules, uh, very similar to what can be found in the Mustang Mach-E or maybe the Chevy Bolt. Um, so we're reusing those batteries from this crash car. And these are based on pouch cells, LG pouch cells. So once you disassemble those into little slices, you can figure that out. So you could buy these kind of modules mm -hmm. also from uh, a place on online like the battery hookup. Yep. Dot com. So they sell these modules. You can take them apart and reconfigure them like we're doing them, or you can use them in their stock configurations with the standard bus bars. It all depends on what you want to do. Next questions. And I think we answered that a little bit already. Are your batteries waterproof? I mean, obviously they are not like this, but once we put them into the module casings that we're thinking about right now, they, everything will be waterproof. The whole Jeep will be waterproof. Are you going to balance the battery modules and how will you do this? So the answer is yes. So the AEM battery management system uh, that we're using uh, has the capability of balancing all the modules during charging. So it will be doing all of that for us. How do we cool and heat the batteries? So um, once you disassemble the battery modules, the LG Cam ones into these slices here, you will find that these are like two pouch cells here. And in between we have a little aluminum cooling fin. So this is then attached to a cooling plate and this is how battery cells are heated and cooled. And also in our Jeep, we want to have an active liquid cooling system. So actually we are right now looking into cooling plates that we would attach at the bottom of our modules. The plan right now, and maybe there's a couple different concepts, is to have one module on the top and one module on the bottom of a cooling plate. And then we'll physically attach them, use some heat transfer paste. There's some other type of material there to transfer the heat from the cells to the cooling plate. And then we'll have uh, one cooling line going to the back battery pack and then also to the front battery pack. And then we'll have in the system the ability to heat them up for the winter time, cool them down in the summertime, or if it's spring or fall, let's say, uh, maybe it's just circulating the cool for the air temperature water. So should be fine. Will you recycle your batteries? Yes, we yeah. will at least bring it to a recycler. Yeah, eventually, you know, we hope to drive the Jeep for eight to 10 years and then, but then we'll see, you know, maybe at that time we make an off-grid energy storage system from the batteries and use them again for another 10 or 15 years. But eventually when we're done with the batteries, we would then take them to Redwood or- Great Lakes Recycling. Great in Michigan, Lakes Recycling we have connections in there. Yeah, yeah. So. so they can recycle all the batteries for us. So we will definitely make sure that they either get recycled and turned into new batteries or get recycled in an environmentally friendly way. Lots of questions about cost. So now that we're really laying out all the components and we bought already electric motor, inverter, onboard charger and all these things, people start asking about cost. So what's the total budget for the Jeep? What's the total cost? This is probably not uh, a project for everybody. So what we're doing is really a complete, let's say conversion down to the body and the frame, pulling everything out and then replacing a lot of the main powertrain components with brand new parts. So the brand new Cascadia Motion electric motor and inverter, 
brand new control system. Yeah, the batteries are refurbished, but still that's those those are pretty new. Um, and then the rest of the car is is used. So our conversion is probably a bit more than the typical uh, home conversion kit. So it's probably going to be any around forty thousand dollars, I guess, um, including all the batteries, the controllers, the wires, everything to be done, including the about the $10,000 for the Jeep that we paid yes. for it. We're looking to do a, a more cost-effective one, you know, possibly taking a Nissan Leaf powertrain and battery um, and repurposing that, in which case we think that we can get the conversion, you know, maybe down to $10,000 or less yep. Yeah, with the controller, maybe not including the laborer if you want to have a shop do it. Um, but this is kind yeah. of EV Jeep 2.0. Exactly. So obviously the more parts you can use from scrap cars that are that you don't have to buy new, the lower the price will be. As you said, for us, we are reusing batteries. So that was kind of cheaper than, than buying new batteries. Yep. But of course, electric motor and all that yep. is more expensive right now, but we're working on a lower yep. cost version. Yeah, and of course, the, the type of battery has a big cost effect as well. So, you know, we were lucky because Mach-E modules are a little bit less demand than maybe Tesla modules are, for example. So if we wanted to go with our first choice, which was the Tesla modules, because we believe in cylindrical cells and the safety aspects of that, um, it would have probably up the price maybe eight or ten thousand dollars more than than what our conversion will cost us in the end there are questions about if we will develop conversion kits or in general are there conversion kits to make gas-powered cars electric already yes there are there are several companies that we talk to that are working on conversion kits but so far, we have not seen anything really for Jeeps. Certainly companies like EV West and, and other companies out there have kind of conversion kits, which comes with all the components. But it's still up to you to figure out, okay, how am I going to get all of these things into whatever vehicle you're putting them in? We want to try to, you know, work on that a little bit, make something that's a little bit almost ready for a Jeep. It will be very difficult for a couple people out of their garage or, or a, a small workshop to make a really a plug and play kit like companies like Zero EV and some other companies do. But we want to have something that at least people can start from. Um, as you mentioned several times, we're going to be posting all of our documentation, all of our CAD models, everything that we're doing in our conversion online, you know, anything that I 3D print um, so that people can kind of do what we're doing. Um, but we want to make something that's a little bit more cost effective and more available for everybody. So yes. stay tuned for that. Thank you all for the great questions. If there was something that we didn't answer, please put it down in the comment section below and we hope to answer them in a future video. Bye. Bye.